Step on me by the cardigans. Do you think I make all the weird noises because it helps me feel the music or because I f have a compulsion to keep talking and I'm threatened by silence? I personally think it's a mix of both. Leave your uh, answers in the comments down below. Lots of parts to this song, but none of them are that hard. Let's get right into it. Standard tuning, no capo. Let's start off with the intro. First thing you gotta do is you just, with your left hand, you just wanna touch all the strings. You don't wanna push. You can be anywhere. Just lay your fingers gently on the strings and you're gonna strum down up really fast to get that nice, muted, scratchy sound. Sounds almost like a drum, but I'm pretty sure the guitar is going. If it sounds like this, that means you're just pushing too hard. Make sure that just very gently you touch all the strings. Then, fifth fret on the A string, the second string from the top. Let me get in a little closer here. Fifth fret, the A string, second string from the top. I already said that. Why are you repeating yourself? You play it, then you play it again, but the second time you play it, you slide up to seven. So it's five, slide. There we go. Then you're gonna play nine on the A string, second string from the top. Bam, bam, bam. Then go to seven on the D string, third string from the top. Bam, 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 bam. And then here's a little country western tinged part. Is that what tinged means? Put your middle finger on the eighth fret of the second string from the top, play it and then hammer on to the ninth fret. I use my ring finger, I think that's the way to go. So now we've got this. See that little hammer on? Right there. If you're not familiar, a hammer on is where you play one note, then you just smash another finger onto a different fret, and you can hear it go gun. You can hear the note there. It's gonna be quiet at first. It might be silent at first, but the important part is play the first note. Do not pluck the second note. But we're gonna do it fast. Then you go straight to seven on the D string, third string from the top. Let's do it together nice and slow, just that first little part. One, two, three, four. Bam, 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 do, do, do. Then the seventh fret on the third string from the top, you're just gonna play that again. And then you let that note sustain, hold out for several beats. There's a first phrase of the intro, let's play it together. One, two, three, four. You did a, guys, you did a great so far. Do you know what's great? I am feeling both inspired and motivated and happy to be here doing this video today. You can decide. Leave your answers in the comments below. Do you think that I am being sarcastic or sincere? I don't know. I don't know. All right, then after you do that, you're gonna do a very, very similar thing but starting on the third fret of the second string from the top. Check it out. We go So did you see that was like the same pattern? I just started this way more. So on the third fret of the second string from the top, sting from the top. Play that third fret again. Slide up to five. When you're doing that slide, make sure you keep a firm grip on the string the whole time. Otherwise it's gonna go and then it's just gonna disappear. You have to keep pushing while you slide. Then you go to seven on the second string from the top. Then you go down to five on the third string from the top. And then we're gonna do that same hammer on thing we did before. Except this time, you're gonna be on the sixth fret of the A string with the middle finger. And then a hammer on to the seventh fret with your ring finger. And then go straight to the fifth fret on the third string from the top. So that was like this. You guys are doing great. This is my favorite part of the whole song, maybe. I don't know, I made that up. You're gonna play the seventh fret on the third string from the top. And you're gonna bend it so you play it on the seventh fret. Here's what I highly recommend. Use your ring finger to play that seventh fret, but then with your middle finger, push behind it. It can be in the same fret, it can be on the next fret, it doesn't matter. Just push on the same string with your middle finger. Then behind that, push on the same string with your pointer finger. I'm pushing with all three. The ring finger is the only one that really matters, but my other two fingers are adding support and then I can bend. Do I push up or down? I bend down, I go like this. I pull down with all three fingers and then bring it back up. So I go like this. 
It's a slow bend. It's a slow bend, and then a slow release back to the main part. You see that? Practice that with me. We're gonna go one, two, here we go. Bam. Bam. Just like with the slide, you have to keep a firm grip on the string the entire time. I kind of squeeze like this. I go like, like I have one of those finger grip strengthening machines, whatever those are called. I'm not trying to pull my whole hand down. I'm just look, I'm going, uh, uh, I'm like gripping like that. Uh, uh, ha, oh. Yeah. Very helpful when I do that. I think that made you guys stronger, just me doing that. After the bend, you play five on the third string from the top, then three on the same string, then play this three one more time, but slide up to five immediately. So this whole entire intro sounds like this. Observe, observe as I play it for you. of me not I said observe not play along with me so that was good of me you didn't do anything so let's play it together nice and slow whole entire intro one two here we go and two three four now did any of you catch the horrible lie that I just presented. I said, let's do the whole intro, but I left out the... Guys, you've done it. You've learned the intro. A plus job. Time to learn the verse. The iconic verse to Step On Me by the Cardigans. Let's learn these chords. They're fun. It follows a pattern. Put your pointer finger on the fifth fret of the bottom string, the high E string. Put your pinky... Yes, well... I'm gonna say pinky on the seventh fret of the second string from the bottom, the B string, and then ring finger on the seventh fret of the G string, the third string from the bottom. So starting from the bottom, we've got five, seven, seven. If you wanna use other fingers, you can, but I think these work pretty well. At this point, you are going to strum the bottom three strings. Now, a little w word of warning. When I listen to the album version of this song, I can only hear those three notes. But when there's some live recordings out there, and I'm pretty sure he plays the bottom four strings when he does it live, like this. When you play that third string from the top, the open D string along with this chord, it sounds a little bigger, a little fuller, a little richer. You can decide. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that up to you because I'm such a nice guy. You can play the bottom three strings or you can add in that open third string from the top. So this is our first chord. One, two, three, four, great. Then all you have to do after that is you're gonna take these two notes, your ring finger and pinky notes, and you're just gonna move them over one fret. You can use the same fingers or you can use different fingers. It's up to you. But now from the bottom, it's going five, six, six. Same thing about the open D string. You can play it or you can just play the bottom three strings. So now first two chords, we've got Oh, guess what happens next? We take those two notes again and we move them over again. One more fret to the fifth fret. I'm going to leave it up to you. You can use three different fingers. What I do, I just use one finger and smash down on all three of those bottom strings. It's a nice little bar chord practice. So if you're like, I hate bar chords, here's a way to just little itsy bitsy little baby bar chord to help you get used to it that's right that like that like there like here we go at this point in time we are going to continue the trend and those two notes right there are going to move over another fret to the fourth fret so now the way i do this is i do ring finger on the fifth fret of the bottom string then i think i just use my pointer finger to play the next two on the fourth fret but you can use two different fingers the important part is we've got five on the bottom four on second from the bottom Four on third from the bottom. I want the card. The cards are getting gnarly. I'm Irish. All right. After that, we're gonna continue, and these same two notes are gonna move back another fret to the third fret. So I think. What do I do? I think I use my pinky for five, 
And then I use my pointer finger to play both of those threes right there. Fantastic, what a great job. I would like you to guess, what do you think happens next? That's right, you nailed it. Those same two notes, move one more fret back to the second fret. Now you kind of have to use pinky and pointer finger because otherwise it's too much of a stretch. So this, this is where we're almost done with the verse already. We just follow that same pattern of pointer finger, or sorry, bottom string is always on five. And then the two strings above it go from seven to six to five to four to three to two. Let's play it all the way through together nice and slowly. One, two, here we go. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, then to five. And one, two, then go to four. And one, two, all the way to three. And three, two, here's the two. And blow, 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 blow. And now we get to the one and only bar chord in the song. It's a D bar chord. I'm gonna tell you right up front, you don't have to play this bar chord. If you want, you can just play a totally regular D chord, but I'm not gonna tell you how to play it. If you don't know a D chord, you're gonna have to look it up on your own. That's your punishment for not playing the bar chord. But those of you who are willing to brave the bar chord with me, I'll show you how to do it. The reason I, the reason they do that, they do the bar chord in the song. So that's what I'm telling you to do. I'm trying to be as precise and authentic as possible. Pointer finger, fifth fret on the second string from the top. Ring finger, seventh fret on the third string from the top. And then this is where it gets really gnarly. Your ring finger has to smash down on the next three strings. So we've got pointer finger, five of the A string, then seventh fret, seventh fret, seventh fret, all with the ring finger. Your middle finger is doing nothing. It just looks like it's doing something because it has nowhere better to go. Pinky is not doing anything. Your pointer finger can bar down to the bottom string, but it's not really that important. We don't really care that much about this bottom note. We really just care about the five, seven, seven, seven. So really it's your ring finger that's doing the barring with this chord. We play that D and then we've got this little lead lick that goes like this. It was a little sloppy. I beg your pardon. We're gonna play seventh fret on the second string from the bottom, fifth fret on the bottom string, seven on the bottom string. So that was bum, bum, bum. This is where it gets a little tricky. We're gonna slide up to this chord here. So I've got pointer finger on 12 of the bottom string, ring finger on 14 of the second to bottom string. We're gonna slide up to that. It doesn't really matter where you slide from, but if you'd like a good place to start, I recommend starting on 10 and 12. So if you're on 10 and 12 of the bottom two strings and just slide right up to 12 and 14. So now we've got, that was, that was crap. That was better, right? You can slide from further if you want. I sometimes slide from way down here because that's where my hand already is. Guys, after you slide up to that, you're gonna go back to that 10 and 12. See that? Great, fantastic job. I'm saying the word that a lot, have you noticed? Then we go to nine and 10. I recommend continuing to use pointer and ring finger, even though it's kind of a tight little squeeze, because right after this nine and 10, we're gonna slide to five and seven. And so you just, as you're sliding, you spread your fingers apart a little bit. Your pointer finger just has to slide a little bit further than your ring finger. So this whole little lead part was bum, bum, bum. Guys, we did it. Let me show you the next part of the verse. Let me show you the next part. Starts off exactly the same as the first part of the verse. We just do this chord again. But after we play, after we get down to four, we're not gonna connect, we're, 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 we're not gonna continue on to three and two. We're gonna strum the chord that's five, four, four. And then we're gonna do this thing. This really 
creative little riff they have. A riff, what's a riff? Pop quiz, what's a riff? That's right, it's a short, repeated guitar part. Doesn't have to be on guitar, but often it is. Um, you could play it like this. But the way they do it, they use open strings and it's very strange and very cool. You're gonna put your middle finger on the sixth fret of the top string, play that note, then play the next string, the second string from the top open. Make sure that whatever, your middle finger up here on top, make sure you're using the very tip of your finger so that you don't mute that second string from the top. So we've got, then you go right back up to the top string. So that's bah, bah, bah. what works for me extremely well is I pluck down, up, down. That was not my best work. I kind of hit, I kind of made a mess of the situation, but we go down, up, down. Then add your ring finger to the sixth fret of the A string, the second string from the top. Go ahead and keep your middle finger there. Play the second string from the top and then play the third string from the top open. So I just went like this. So that was six on the top, second string from the top open, back to the top string, six on the second string from the top, then the third string from the top open. It takes some coordination. It's a little, it's a little tricky, but I think it's very fun to play. Then we play the same thing, but with just a little bit of a different rhythm. So it's like I think the best way for us to get through this is not for me to talk about offbeats and downbeats and and schnozberries, but just to slowly play it together three times in a row. How do you feel about that? Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, I betrayed your trust by messing up in the middle there. Do you know what that sound is? It's my foot hitting the guitar. I think I'm, I feel like I'm a little too hyperactive today. I feel like I need to chill out a little bit. I have a sip of my electric lights. And then, um, I think we should probably play the whole verse. So the verse is we do the chords all the way down to two. Then we do our, then we do the chords again, but we stop when we get to the fourth fret and then we do our, and just like we just practiced it, you do that little thing, not that, but we do that three times. Play the whole verse, let's play the whole verse. Oh, my computer fell asleep. One. Two, three, four. And back a sixth fret, and then the fifth fret, and then the fourth fret, and then the third fret, and then the second fret, and the bar chord. And back to the chords again. We go back to the chords, my friend. The fifth fret is coming now. Then the fourth fret, I wonder how, but then we go At this point in time, we have the build up to the chorus. What did I say about being too hyperactive today? I think I said you were being too hyperactive. Calm down. I messed it up on purpose to prove a point. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I will tell you what that point is. If you're finding this content helpful and engaging, consider a subscription to my channel. Or similarly, consider uh, liking this video or leave in the comments. I think I asked several questions during this video. Answer some of those questions. Um. I remember, I remember exactly what it is. Look at this. Sixth fret on the top string, then go to the eighth fret on the second string from the top, and then fifth, seventh fret, 
on the third string from the top. So that was six, eight, seven. Use any fingers you'd like, but I recommend having all the fingers there at once. So you can just go. And then you go back to the second string from the top with your finger there still. So it's binky bing bong and binky bing bong. We do that once. Then we go to this. It's a pretty big change. I wonder why he does this. You go ring finger on the fifth fret of the third string from the top. Then your pointer finger is going to bar. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's not like actually a bar chord. Your pointer finger is going to bar the third fret on the second to bottom and third from the bottom string. So you've got starting on the D string, third string from the top, it's going to go five, three, three, and then we go back up to that middle string. So it's bing, e, bing, bong. So far we have this. Then we go all the way up to the eighth fret. Your pointer finger is gonna, it's gonna bar the bottom three strings on the eighth fret. But this is an easy bar chord. You're gonna thank me when you're older. Pointer finger bars the bottom three strings on the eighth fret. You play those three strings. And then with your pinky, you reach up and play 11. Bunky bunka. At this point in time, you immediately are gonna go our little muted down up thing. What do you think about that? Let's play that little three chord lead into the chorus all together very slowly. One, two, play it with me and. Did you notice that I counted it off at a completely different speed than I've actually played it? I'm noticing my microphone is facing away from me. I wonder if that's gonna be a problem. We've done the intro. We've done the entire verse. We've done the lead into the chorus. Little did you know, we've actually already learned the chorus because the chorus is the exact same thing as the intro. It's where we go It's that exact same thing. They just do it two times in a row. Now, one guitar is playing that, it's true. That's the prevalent main guitar part. Let me quickly show you the chords for the chorus so that if you don't want to play the lead part, if you want to strum the chords and sing, you can do that. It's a bunch of power chords. Power chords. Oh, top string is out of tune. Enough mucking around. Let's learn the chords to the chorus. Like I said, a bunch of power chords and some slight variations on a power chord. Pointer finger, fifth fret on the A string, second string from the top. Then I'm gonna very strongly recommend you, you use your pinky to play the seventh fret on the D string, the third string from the top. You can use your ring finger if you'd like, but there's gonna be a little bit of a stretch in a minute. So I recommend using pinky. Only play those two strings you're pushing on. Now, alternatively, you'll notice when I play power chords, I'm hitting like all the strings. I have the tip of my pointer finger is muting the E string, the top string, and the base of my pointer finger is down here muting all of those bottom strings. So even though I'm strumming all the strings, I'm only hearing these two right here. It's, guys, it's completely up to you. You can try to mute the other strings, or you can just very carefully for those two strings. We're gonna play this chord, which happens to be a D power chord, which is also known as a D5 chord. If you ever see a chord that says like D5, E flat five, F five, it means a power chord. It means you use this little shape here. So, so there you go. We're gonna play this chord one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Then you're gonna keep your pinky in the same spot, but move your pointer finger to the fourth fret might feel like a stretch at first. It's not that much of a stretch. You can do it. Just make sure your thumb is not poking up over the top. If your thumb is poking up over the top, it's gonna be much, much, much harder. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Move to the fourth fret eight times. Then you're gonna play a regular power chord on the third fret of the second string from the top. So we've got pointer finger on three, then pinkies on five of the next string. One, two, three, four, only four strums. Move your pointer finger to two. This one's a little bit more of a stretch because the frets are a little bigger back here. 
One, two, three, four. Great. So, so far we've got. Oh, wait. Sorry. I played it too many times. Four times each for that. And then you go to first fret. And third fret, you can switch to ring finger if you'd like. I'm gonna keep using pinky. One, two, three, four times on that chord. Then you take the same shape, move it up to six and eight. So your pointer finger's on six, four times. And then, finally, pointer finger plays the fourth fret on the top string. Pinky plays the sixth fret on the second string. One, two, three, four. And then you take this same chord and move it one fret over. So now you're on five and seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Why did I just start? I meant to say, hey, let's play it together nice and slow. One, two, here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, Switch one, two, three, switch one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I don't know why I didn't yell switch for those last two. And that's the chorus. And then the chorus starts over. You play those same chords again. Uh, something I forgot to mention, I think. Did I? No, okay. I said that the, right before the chorus, we go, we do that thing again at the very end of the chorus. So we play it two times. We're on that fourth fret on the top string power chord. One, two, the second time through, instead of going up to the fifth fret, you just go one, two, three, four. And then you go back to the verse. Okay. I actually, believe it or not, I think we've learned all the, all the different parts of the song. So let's just talk through it real quick, then we'll call it a day. So we've got the intro, right? that I forgot how the intro goes but we got the intro you you know what it is okay then we go to the verse we do that then we go back to the chords we stop at four and then we go remember this part ah uh, then something else happens oh then we go to the Then the power chords, or if you want, you can do the. It's completely up to you. Once we finish that, we go that thing again, back to the verse. We play the verse exactly the same as we did the first time. In the studio recording, they do something a little bit different than that. Um, but when they do it live, I think they usually just do that one. So I just don't, I don't wanna mess with it. We're just gonna do this one both verses okay and then i have to look at my cheat sheet here yeah everything's the same we play the verse all the way through exactly the same we do these same chords building up uh we do the chorus exactly the same and then okay after we do the chorus a second time through you see me just completely lose track of who i was as a human being there for a second after the second chorus we go back into this We go immediately into bunky banky binky banky bunky bunky. Check this out though. Before the final chorus, we go. We do two sets of chukas, chukka, and we go into the chorus. We go through the chorus twice. Then the ending of the song is we go. the end of the intro and then we end it with a kong kong. and that's it that's the whole thing so anyway I yes I am aware that for the last four minutes of this video I just phoned it in and stopped trying but sometimes that's what you get um, I told you I was gonna tell you something if you stuck around until the end of the video I don't remember what it was so it fooled you